<laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for Hello. joining us here in the Reset for Success group. Um, why don't we get started with a couple of uh, introductions and then we'll launch into why we are here today. Gabby, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I am Gabby Abdel Gadir, and I am a certified Canfield Success Principles trainer, and I am part of this amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, talented ladies mastermind group. How about that? <laughs> That's for everybody. We're all done. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Carol, you're up. Hi, I'm Cheryl. I am. Um, my company is called Rise and Shine, and I work with organizations as well as their leaders and individuals on personal development. And I too am a certified Canfield trainer who loves, lives, and adores the principles because they work. They work. They work. I can't say it enough. They work. <laughs> amen. Amen. Jody. Yeah. Well, the principles work if you work the principles, right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, and that's why we're here. So I am Jody Santangelo Ash. I am passionate about personal development as these ladies are. I love learning. I love teaching. I teach success principles. I teach success mindset. I teach uh, empowerment strategies. And just like these ladies, we've got the systems to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. So we're so glad that you're here and you're joining us tonight. I'm sitting here. I'm so lost in listening to you guys. I like forgot that I was here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you guys are amazing. <laughs> oh God, yeah. I'm Whitney, and again, I am part of this group. We are um, in a mastermind group together. We've been. They've been together longer. I've been with you guys. What about a year and a half now? Um, and we started doing some programs for this group last year. Just want to share the things that we are passionate about, in particular, the success principles. I too am a certified Canfield success, success principles trainer, and um, I work with organizations and individuals helping to create work, workplaces, and cultures that people love to work in because all about love and work and doing things that um, allow you to use your gifts and talents in a way that improve the world. So um, we're just going to launch into a discussion. There is the opportunity for you to participate two ways. Um, and Tammy, yeah. thank you for joining us. Um, you can do this by Facebook Live. So if you're in Facebook and in the group, you are welcome to post any questions or comments as we go along. There is also a link to the Zoom room. So if you want to come in and join us here as part of the discussion, um, as long as you follow along with the discussion that we're having, <laughs> not create your own, you are welcome to join us. So what do you say? Don't go rogue. <laughs> you cannot go rogue. We will not allow you to go rogue. <laughs> oh, no. Jody got her book. Jody, you want to yeah, show yeah, what we're talking about and where we are launching from it is the Jack Canfield the success principles book um I think it's been stated somewhere in the 10th anniversary edition I just got it yes <laughs> the 10th oh you got the 10 the, you got the new one I just I the second one. one that I got is the workbook yeah I got the workbook too I think you all got this right the workbook I have it on pdf so okay as much as we love this and think you should have a copy, you don't need a copy. Yeah. You do not need a copy to follow along with us. We are not going to cover every success principle in our monthly series, but we're going to pick out some of our favorites, some of the um, most popular ones, the ones that make, I think, the biggest difference. But there are 67 of them. They're all absolutely amazing and they're interconnected, right? Yeah. So as we talk about these, um, and I'm just going to say, uh, let whoever wants to start talking um, about this first principle. The first principle is taking 100% responsibility for your life. So who wants to like share what this principle actually means? 
yeah. um, so that people know what we're talking about. Sure, sure. I, I can do that. And, you know, sometimes in our trainings, you know, if we want to be successful in our in our life and success is for whatever success means to you. Right. Because we all have different visions of what success means to 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 each of us. So it's a, it's totally a personal thing. But we say that if we want to be successful in our life, then th the principle that we're teaching is really the foundation of it all. It's it's almost like a prerequisite. And as you already know, that very first principle is to take 100 percent responsibility for your life. And so to me, it means to take responsibility for everything you're experiencing. So that could be the results you're getting, your achievements, uh, the quality of your relationships, your income, your savings, your debt, your feelings, all of it take 100% responsibility. And you know, for some people, it's a little much to think, wow, I have 100% responsibility. So what we know to be true is that is if you act as if you have 100% responsibility for the results in your life, life seems to just work out a little bit better that way. Now, the good news is when you realize that you created the results that you're getting, the good news is, is if you don't like the results that you're getting, then you can uncreate them and you can recreate them. Absolutely. And so that's what happened to me. And I'm sure we'll hear the stories from all of my, my, my friends here. So taking responsibility, um, what happened to me was many years ago, everything just seems to crash all at the same time, including my marriage, my job, and yes, even my health. And let me tell you, I stayed in my pity party for far too long. I was blaming because that's what we tend to do. I was blaming and guess what? I felt justified in blaming. And I was complaining to anybody that would listen, listen to me. And after a long time, I finally realized, you know, this really isn't working. And so I took Jack's advice, took a leap of faith that I really did have some control and could take 100% responsibility. And I finally got to that place where I decided that this I am done with feeling like this. And so sometimes in life, we have to get to that point where we say, you know, I am done with this. Ladies, have you ever been there? Like I am so done with this relationship or I am so over this job. And when we get to that spot, then, you know, we, we can begin to make some changes. And so I took Jack's advice and I just became very deliberate about uh, what I was talking to myself about, what I was talking to other people about, who I was hanging around, who I was reading, who was listening. And fortunately, I was able to turn myself my whole life around just based on um, this principle. And now I think I live a really wonderful life. So that's my story of taking 100% responsibility. So who's up next? Who will share? Yeah, I what can, I can. I can I can chip in right now. Um, the thing is that challenges are always going to face us. It's going nowhere. Like COVID came out of the blue, right? And look at us like lockdown. I don't know about you, Florida people and California people, but in Toronto here, we've been on a complete lockdown since December. So are we sitting down and crying about it and uh, getting in this? Yes, it can get suffocating because it's too long but we're making the best of it. We've decided, deciding to make the best of it is, is a good decision to make. That is taking responsibility, it's up to you. Are you gonna sit there depressed and crying? I can't go out, I can't see my friends or you're gonna hope for the best and make the best of every day. That's one of the things. For me before, before, yeah, before even like Jack Canfield just put it in place, but I was almost 17 when I have learned to take responsibility for myself. That is during the civil war when my mom and I had to run from one country to another with only two clothing each, zero money, 
nothing. We went to another country. That is, I could have sat there depressed. I could have sat there crying all the time. That is when I really grew up and I said, okay, my mom has lost everything. The money she had, everything she had because of me to save my life technically. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to first thing to do is I'm going to meet people from my community, which happened really quickly. And then I'm going to get a job and we're going to start a life from scratch. That's exactly what I did. And I worked three jobs at some, I think for about three years, I worked three jobs for my mom and I to start like living like a decent life. It was not bad, but to just be able to have a decent life. After that, things got better. So that is it. So things are going to happen. People are going to get sick. People are going to lose jobs. People are going to lose businesses, which is exactly what's happening right now. And so there is that choice. You lost your job. Are you going to sit there and cry about it? Or are you going to say, okay, when one door closes, another and a greater one opens up? Mm. That is taking full responsibility for yourself. So take it away, Bu. Take it away, ladies. Yeah. Well, I was I was just yeah. gonna I was just gonna jump in really quick and say, you know, it's okay to feel like that for a little while. Yeah, a little while. Right. Right. Because we're entitled to our feelings, but then you've got to realize that things need to change. And right. so yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, Cheryl, you wanna um, talk about E plus R equal equals O. Yeah. I know that's one of your your favorites. Absolutely. You know, the reason why I love this, this principle is because we have, and I have also been there in that why me stage, right? It's the, you know, why is this happening to me? I deserve better. I'm a good person. I deserve to have more money. I deserve to have better friends. I deserve to be promoted. And what I had to realize is that in continuously asking the why me's, I came into my head all of these reasons, right? All of these negative reasons why it wasn't happening. And so I call that chatter, right? That's that, that's that negative chatter that just comes from the external into the internal. And so when you look at this formula, E plus R equals O, in its meaningful stage, right? It's events plus our response equals our outcome. Outcome, yeah. And oftentimes what happens is we like to blame that event. Boy, it's the economy, it's my boss, it's my spouse, it's my friends, it's my coworkers. That all falls into that why me? It's because it's all of them. <laughs> they are the reasoning why it's happening to me. And when I realized that there's some control in here, wait a second, there's, there's some way for me to be able to control my outcome and get a different outcome. And I have power to be able to change my responses. And when I really thought about this formula and internalized it and conceptualized it and said, wait a second, now this is much powerful than just these letters that we put together, right? This is E plus R equals O. This is, I have control over how I respond, which means that I have control over my outcome. Now it might not always go my way, but I still have control to be able to say what I want to say, how I want to say it, to be able to do what I want to do, how I want to do it after giving it some thought, right? Because that's the important part. That's that R factor is that to take that moment, as I say, to pause and give your response some thought so that you can get the outcome that you want. And I just think that that is so important because it takes you, it elevates you from that why me to because of me. And I think that's, a, that's just such a big, big difference. So that's how I use the formula. That's its intent is for you to be able to shift, to make that shift in your mindset, to make that shift in your actions, which then shifts your results. Absolutely. You know, and I think about the blaming and complaining and what you said, Cheryl, um, agree. In, in the subject, but at the same time, I was allowing what other people were doing or not doing to impact how I was feeling about my job and how I was approaching the things that I was doing. And it, 
I didn't need, well, I hadn't learned, I hadn't met Jack Canfield in my life at that point. So I didn't know about the success principles specifically, but there came a point in time where I realized that if I continued on the path that I was on, I was going to be unhappy. I was going to continue to be unhappy and miserable in my work. And that wasn't what I wanted. And this goes to your point about E plus R equals O, Cheryl, which was I had to change my response. I couldn't change those people. I couldn't change the fact that they were not good leaders or maybe they were and I didn't recognize it. I don't know. I don't think they were, but I couldn't change it. It didn't matter ultimately if they were or were not. I could not change that. And so I had to, to control the one thing I could control, which was me, my response, my actions, my feelings, the words that came out of my mouth, right? The, the things that I complained about, the things that um, I was blaming. And when, when I did that, a couple of things happened. One is that I actually came up with some ideas that I shared with my boss about things that I could do that would help me to enjoy my job more. So um, some people might think this is crazy, but I took on, actually took on additional duties. They were things that I wanted to do that prepared me for what I'm doing now. And so I, it helped me to get creative, right? I was able to actually take um, some things that I was interested in, which was mentoring and training and, um, and working with the staff that was coming up, preparing them. I put together a, a, a um, intern and extern program and ran that program, oversaw the law students that we brought into the office because those were things that I wanted to do. And if I had continued just whining about what I was unhappy about, I never would have had the chance to do that. So I think one of the things that happens is when you change your response, you can change the outcome. And, and what you want to do is to think about what is the outcome that I want? This event has already happened. Coronavirus, bad leadership, yeah. you know, you lost your job, whatever it is, it has already happened and you can't do anything about that. What do yeah. you want? Ask the question, what do you want? And once you decide what it is you want, then you can start to figure out how do I respond? What actions can I take that will allow me to get to the respond, the outcome that I'm actually looking for? And you know, that's, um, that is uh, brilliant. And that is a really good uh, um, uh, a, a trait of yours. So the gap between the E plus the R, oh. the g gap between the E and the R allows us to stop. And Cheryl said, pause or Whitney to stop and think about what you want. So that gap is really that golden moment that you have between taking a time, you know, stepping back because who gets to choose your response? You do. You get to choose your response, yeah. but most people don't take the time to step back and realize they have the choice to choose how they want to res respond so that they get a better outcome. Instead, what's the other R word? They <laughs> react. React, yeah. And then they get a completely different outcome. And so when we teach this, when we work with companies and we teach this in offices and when we work with different groups, you know, this is really important. So and one of the things that I always suggest, you know, in that gap between the E and the R, if you feel if you're feeling emotional and you are just tempted to react, because have any of you ever just reacted? Tell me about it. With my husband. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So for me, you've got to find your way to take your pause so that you, instead of reacting, you respond appropriately. And so for me, the best, my best way to take my pause is to take a time out. Yes. My husband can say something and say, you know what, honey, 
If I'm feeling emotional, honey, I need a timeout. But but what they do? What they do? But 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 what they? Honey, I just need a quick little timeout. But 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 <laughs> but but honey, and then finally I'll just and then I say I'll be back in in a few minutes. But you just got to take your time to take a timeout, and then I can kind of like talk myself off the ledge, right? Is it really true that he's this or that or this? No, it's not really true. And then I can go back and be more um, emotionally um, <laughs> calm. So yeah. what, so ladies, what is a great way for you to take that time? What is a great thing for you? What do you do between the E and the R? Okay, for me, um, I like to step back and like in the workplace, for example, if somebody really ticks me off, or rubs me the wrong way, I just log off and I just go downstairs for a walk. Because if I respond at that particular time, my response would not be, I would be reacting, I would not be responding, right? So I definitely have learned, thanks to Jack Canfield, uh, because this was not part of the, um, the taking responsibility I was talking about earlier, it's different. and. I don't respond, I take a deep breath in and immediately I step outside and I go for a good 10, 15 minute walk and then my feeling would be completely different than when it was 15 minutes earlier. Before it used to be like, what did you just say? Why don't you go to, you know where? That is what Gabby used to be like, like 20 years ago. Now it's like, okay, and then I just listen, I go for a walk, I take deep breathing and like the taking deep breath is really, really important. It does help calm you down. I think people underestimate the value, the benefit of this one. So I do that when I come back, I don't even have to respond immediately. Like I can wait until the next day or whatever I am where I am even much calmer and mm -hmm. much more. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that period, like you said, Jody, is extremely important. Mm -hmm. That time. Wait, you went about you. Yeah. I, that's the place I start as well, right? Is to just take a deep breath. And it's something that has taken time to get there. I used to be a reactor. Mm -hmm. I like to think now I am a responder and that I am much more intentional with my responses. Again, these are things that I was aware of before I, I became a, you know, part of the Jack Canfield world. So they were lessons that I was learning. I wouldn't, so here's the interesting thing. I would not have characterize them as things that were making me successful, right? They were just things that I learned along the way. And then, you know, as I have matured and actually taken a look back, kind of connected the dots, I was like, oh, that's exactly why I succeeded in that situation or in that area, in school, in my job, in business, relationships, is connecting the dots in the rear view mirror, right? It's hard to see it when you're in the middle of it. But learning to step back, to, to stop, breathe, count to 10, right? That used to be something that I had to actively do was to stop. And it's like, you just count, just count to 10, you know, the breathe. And then think about what it is you want to come from this situation. And what I will say are the two things more than anything that have helped in that regard as an adult has been being a parent and being a wife. It is these relationships that are the closest relationships that I've had that help to put that mirror up so that I can stop and see what is, you know, a reflection of what's going on with someone else. A, a lot of times um, how we respond to things we think is someone else, but it's really a mirror for us about what's going on inside of us. And I, I, honestly, I was unhappy 
a, a lot of my early adulthood after a divorce and for a long period of time after that. And I didn't recognize that I was unhappy. And so I was interacting with people in a way that was very reactionary and strident. And I didn't want that. And so I, I just, if someone asked me, I'm going to share this and then I let someone else speak. I was on a date one night with this guy. I don't remember his name. It's interesting. I had this conversation with my sister on a podcast um, and I was saying, I was on this date. I did not, I don't know who he is. I don't, I, I wouldn't know him if he walked up and, you know, punched me in the arm. So, it, and, and it doesn't matter who it is, but he said to me that I was angry. He said, you're like an angry, bitter woman. And in the moment I was kind of like, you're crazy, dude. But I really, I, I did stop to think about it and realize he was right. And I didn't want to be that person. I just, I did not want to be angry and bitter. And while I may have been justified from whatever had happened, it didn't matter. I didn't want to be that person. So I, I had to make other choices and stopping. Gabby, you're absolutely right. Stopping, breathing, counting to 10. You know, I don't need to count to 10 anymore, except in rare occasion, because I, I'm much more self-aware now and so i can just stop and then make a decision instantly most of the time if not instantly however long it takes and then respond the way i want to respond that i at least think will lead me where i want to go whether or not it actually does is another story but i give my at least i give myself an opportunity to get where i want to go yeah and you create a much better outcome as a result. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Cheryl. You know, it, <clears throat> it's interesting because when I think of this responses, um, I think about it not only being how you react verbally, but it's also how you react non-verbally. And a lot of times people think, oh, you know, if I if I'm really quick at the lips or if I snap off, then you know, that's my negative response. For me it was always my facial expressions. And um, you know, my daughter would tell me right now, she'd be like, you know, you have some facial expressions that just says the entire thing. And so I have to be cognizant <laughs> of when I am actually in an interaction with someone and, and we might have, you know, um, we might have differing opinions or um, you know, just in a conversation that I see is not going anywhere. It's like, okay, we're going to end, we can talk for four days. And at the end of this four day conversation, you're still going to believe what you believe. And I'm still going to believe what I believe. And so in my mind, this is a waste of time. And so let us not continue to have this conversation. And for me, I literally um, have to be really cognizant of not only what I'm saying, but what I'm looking like when I'm saying it. And, you know, that's why this whole Zoom world that we're in now virtually, I have literally had to continue to go, smile. <laughs> <laughs> smile. Don't look like Put you're on one of those hats smile. or a piece of pizza in the front or whatever <laughs> you want to do. Exactly. Just, um, just exactly. <laughs> because, yeah. I mean, you know, when you think about it, right, and we hear it all the time, nonverbal communication is 70% of yeah. literally what we're saying. And so when people think about this formula, you have to, you have to add that component on because we are masters of facial expressions and you know, just the if it's just the eye rolling or a, just the smirking of the mouth, or you know, just that look when you're like, Yeah, could you just come on or be quiet or shut up or whatever you know <laughs> yeah the words are the words are positive coming out your mouth but the body yeah. language like, the body language yeah. yeah yeah that's exactly. huge the body exactly. language yeah yeah you know so it 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 for me it's been always interesting because i've always been told that i have some of the craziest facial expressions and it depends on 
you know, the situation that I'm in. And so I literally have to kind of feel my face when I get into situations and go, okay, so you feel like you're looking in a certain way. So, you know, but it gives you something to think about, right? It gives me something to think about because if we're sending mixed messages, and we're saying something, but our nonverbal is saying something else, then that puts us into that, that um, puts us into that arena of, um, you know, not being clear, right? It puts us into that mindset of, you know, no, you know what I'm saying. It's like, but they're going, no, huh? I really don't because, you know, you're conflicting here. I think I know what you're saying, but you no, know, it, it, it's kind of like if you're saying, yeah, I'm, I'm really good at this. And, you know, and in the same time, I'm nodding my head. No, it's like, okay, so are you yesing or are you knowing? Um, so <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, God. So it's just being really, really cognizant of that. And then, you know, the other thing for me is I have to think about how I responded to a similar situation in the past, because our responses are based on past experiences. And I have to think about, you know, Whitney, when you talked about earlier, right? What is the outcome that I want? And we all know, right? Insanity is doing the exact same thing, wanting a different outcome. And so when we apply this E plus R equals O factor, looking at the outcome, what is the outcome that I want? And if I'm in a similar situation, rather it's dating, rather it's marriage, rather it's work, there had to be a similar a situation that was either similar, it was in the same block, it might've been on the same street, maybe next door to where you live, whatever it is, it's in close proximity to what you're experiencing now. And if you didn't like that outcome, what was your response then? And then give that pause moment and go, okay, wait a second, did that before, didn't get the response that I want. So now let me do something different. Yeah. And then, I, you know, that's all in the growth aspect, right? Because we're constantly becoming who we are meant to be. And so this is an element for us to be able to say, okay, I have a growth opportunity here. And especially, I talk to people so much about leadership and, you know, um, what is a true leader? And a true leader is always one that's growing. It's never one that says, I'm already there. It's always one that says, I'm still getting there. And that's okay. But to be able to, to recognize what it is that you want and knowing I have the ability, I got power, I got power I got to the be power. able to shift, right? I got the power to be able to make this shift. And then when you get that response that you want, oh my gosh, you're going to want to do it all day. You're, gonna just, you're just going to go around having conversations with people testing it out. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the beautiful things about this is that it's not just taking responsibility, but it it, it empowers you, right? It, it it lets you, it puts you back in control. So rather than being at the whim of the economy or bad leaders or your mom or wife or husband or whatever, or whatever the situation is, you actually get to take back the power. Mm -hmm. and move forward the way you are choosing to move forward. Mm. So I want to ask this question about, and we've talked about this in a roundabout way, the, the kind of the concept of complaining, mm. right? I'll admit it. I was a complainer. Um, I'm not, <laughs> who's, who's complained already today? Even <laughs> who's listening now? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one of the things that is about complaining, there's complaining in general, but one of the things I think we do a lot is, and we, we characterize it as venting, right? I'm just blowing off steam, but yeah. what we're doing is actually complaining to the wrong person. And have you had situations where you've done that, right? Where, you know, or, or it's a, I, I'm asking for prayer, right? And, and, and you're pretending like you're asking people for prayer, but you're really just looking for opportunity to whine or complain about something. Um, have you ever, have any of you ladies had a situation like that? And um, how have you changed and stopped doing that? Well, what I've noticed is, as you said, we complain to the wrong people. We go to work and we complain all about home. We go home and we complain all about work rather than 
having the difficult conversation, if it's a difficult conversation with a person who can actually do something about the complaint. You know, if I have a problem with my husband, you can't help me. I mean, you might be able to give me some ideas on how you've handled a similar situation, but I'm the one that still has to have the difficult conversation. And you know, it takes courage. It takes, it, it takes courage. And um, when, we when we're complaining, it's usually because that we, we believe that there's something better out there for us, right? There's more money or there are more fulfilling jobs or, you know, a, a, a better relationships, but we're not willing to take the risk of what is required to make that change. You know, we risk losing our job. You know, we, we risk um, failure, we risk, you know, we, uh, feeling uncomfortable in, in these, you know, in these different situations. So it's, we, we complain, um, you know, so we end up complaining and we stay where we are. And so I think that we have to, um, if we're going to be honest, we need to accept the fact that this is where I choose and yes, it is a choice. I choose to stay in this situation and stop complaining or get yeah. out and try something new and different. But yes, I catch myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. Like what? A, um, yeah, I'm unmuted. So in the workplace, especially what I have noticed it complaining actually increases the problem. So what is what from my experience, what I have been seeing is like two ladies or two, two people get into a fight. So that person goes somewhere and bad mouths the other person complains. What they don't realize is always that everything that this person said is gonna go back to the other and then it turns into war. So it's better always if you really have to complain, if you really have to vent, I think it is better if you call your spouse at home because he's not going to go to the workplace to your colleagues or to your business partners and talk about it or call your best friend, someone who is in the same frequency as you, who would understand, just listens and calms you down. So that is it. But complaining is like, it's like the law of attraction. The more we complain, the more we will attract things to complain about. So this is my thing. So be careful who you vent with, be careful who you complain to. That's it. <laughs> Go. Yeah, it, it's so interesting that you said, be careful who you complain to. Yeah. Because that is so important. Because oftentimes, you know, so you have this encounter, right, where it's been a bad experience. And so you want to continuously talk about it. You want to talk about it. And you want to talk about it. And you want to talk about it some more and some more and some more. And so what have you just done? Well, you've given this person permission. Yeah. Given this person permission to sit in your car with you while you're driving home because you're complaining about them on the phone. You've <laughs> given this person permission to sit at your dinner table with you, interrupting your family time because you're complaining about it at the dinner table. And so, you know, you, what are you doing here? You're bringing this person along with you that you're trying to get rid of. And so, you know, so when I think about complaining, it just, it's like, so when does the complaining stop and the action start? What is it that you're complaining about? Is it something that can be, is it fixable? Because if it is, why are you going to spend the next eight, nine, 10 hours talking about it, interrupting your dinner, interrupting your family time, interrupting your sleep? because it's two o'clock in the morning and you woken up talking about, oh my gosh, I can't stand that girl. You know? <laughs> I can't wait to get back to work tomorrow to give her the evil eye. You know, and, and so what are you doing? You're literally disrupting your life. And I guarantee you that person, they eating in peace, they sleeping in peace. <laughs> they don't I'm even exactly. remember what happened. <laughs> And then the next day, it's like kids, right? The next day, they're like, hey, you want to go have lunch? And you're like, really? And you're still mad, right? <laughs> and they're over it. Yeah. So, you know, we, we all have these moments. And, and, you know, I have to catch myself, right? And I always say we're human, right? We're human. And so I give myself a time frame because you want to feel these emotions because you don't want to repress them because then when the pencil pops, you want to kill people. 
and it's yeah. not about the pencil, right? <laughs> Oh. I, make late I, I don't know that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh Lord, yeah. <laughs> you know, so if you don't want to repress these feelings, you want to let them out, but you can't harbor on them. You know, just hold it, release it, and move on to something that's more productive, something that you can see some results from. And you know, if you can't have a conversation with that individual, then get yourself a mediator. You know, bring somebody else yeah. to the table that is neutral so that you guys can literally just kind of talk it out because I guarantee you it's probably just a misunderstanding. Nobody intentionally wants to hurt another person. Most people don't wake up in the morning with the intention to just mess up your day. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I, just, I just want to share a couple of comments that have come in from the Facebook um, group. And so Tammy is saying, um, wow, I think this is in response to a comment that um, you made, Cheryl says, wow, when does the complaining stop and the action start? Um, and uh, Samantha Glass is, says, no one deserves that much power over your time and your mind. And that's mm -hmm. such a good point. The, you know, the other thing is that it's not just, it, it, it's not harmless to you to replay yeah. these stories over and over in your mind. Now, I'm no neuro whatever comes after neuroplasticist <laughs> whatever it is it comes with that. doctor you're not the doctor <laughs> you're not the doctor oh god yeah but they're like dr leaf or dr joe dispenza right these people who have it, it done great research in this but when we are replaying the events in our mind bad events in particular it, we're imprinting that in in our dna in ourselves right? And it becomes a part of who we are. So when I was saying that I was angry and bitter, at that time, I was replaying all the stuff that people had done to me, that mm -hmm. you know, my husband, ex-husband had done to me and other boyfriends and, you know, what my parents did and didn't do and all this stuff. And I was replaying and replaying and replaying. And it was becoming a part of me. So it wasn't just things that I was saying right? It wasn't just thoughts in my head. It was becoming ingrained. And so it takes time and energy to strip that away, right? So, you know, when people, I, I get this question from clients all the time, you know, when they are, we're like doing the same work over and over again. And they're like, but I thought I had figured that out. And it's like, how long have you been doing that? How long have you been saying that story? Why do you think three weeks into us working together that you're going to let go of decades of you repeating the same stories and the patterns over and over again? Those things are ingrained and it takes time. And this complaining is one of those things. So it, it, it's like Gabby said, you have to stop, right? And think that's a complaint. And it's okay if the words start tumbling out of your mouth, the minute that you catch it, stop right there. And I have some friends and they'll say, reverse it, right? And you want to undo that and then restate it, reframe it and start all over again because you, you, you've got to undo the damage that the, the repetition of the story. So every time you repeat it, you're re it's as if you are reliving that incident all over again. Yeah. The the harm that was done. The, the so stop with the complaining. Stop with the blaming. Yeah. And yes, it's easier said than done, but everything is. But you can do it. You just have. It's it's going to take intention. It's going to take time, and if you are. I, 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 I liken it to meditation for those of you who meditate. When you are in the midst of meditating, you're sitting on the mat or your chair, wherever you do your meditation, right? You've got a mantra or you are focused on an anchor. 
and at some point your mind starts to wander and you're not where you're supposed to be right you're not with the breath you're not with your mantra as soon as you realize that you don't kick yourself for not you know staying on course you just acknowledge thinking or you know complaining or whatever it is you just say what it is and then you go back and it's going to take that same sort of intention to go back and start all over again reframe it re-say it and then keep moving on and then the next time it happens stop and redo it and what you'll notice over time is that the amount of time between these incidents gets further and further apart, right? It happens less frequency, the duration lasts less long, and that's progress. It's it's progress, not perfection. Yeah, I have two thoughts on that, but, but when you notice that you are improving, it's like, oh my gosh, look what I did. I'm so proud of myself. It really is a great feeling, right? Yeah. Also when you, um, can be responsible for your R and your outcomes there. Um, Two of my thoughts is when I'm thinking about my husband and if I want to complain about something, you know, he didn't pick up after himself or whatever that is, I I stop and think, okay, Jody, turn your complaints into a request. Because every, every complaint is just a request. And so that kind of helps me to stay on track with that. Uh, The other thing um, that Jack writes about in the book is um, for all of his seminars. And I teach this when I'm working with work groups or working with teams. So you put a kitty in the office and every time somebody complains or makes excuses or blames somebody, you catch catch yourself or catch each other and you put in a dollar or you put in two dollars and it's not to you know to scold it's to bring about awareness that these things have consequences and you can even do it at home and make a fun game out of it right you know mommy i caught you i caught you complaining two dollars in at the end of the month you have a pizza party or whatever (laughs) so that's a great way to hold yourself or your family or your team accountable Okay, what I was going to add to what you just said about your husband, uh, like not picking up his stuff. I tried that, changing the complaining into a request with my son. Didn't work. (laughs) Then you get that teenager. Then you get that teenager. Different mindset. Different mindset. I know. Like, didn't work. (laughs) Like, like, it's it's just we talk. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Three days later, the same thing is on the same spot. So... You ask so, once, then you remind them that you ask, and then... <laughs> then what? Take it, like, throw it in the garbage? <laughs> okay, yeah, I know, eh? So, yeah. Can you get Jack's book that he has, Success Principles for Teams? Yeah, he has that. Yeah. He has a book called Success Principles for Teams. So those of you that are out there, if you are, you know, you're, you're looking at these principles that we're talking about, especially this one, because this one right here is for teenagers, too. If you're looking at this and trying to figure out how, how do I take this and turn it into, you know, teenage language, or how do I turn it into concepts that they can grasp? Mm -hmm. There is a book that he has called success principles for teams. And, um, I, excuse me, I have it and I use it when I talk to youth organizations, but it, it, what it does is it's great because it allows you guys to have conversations about the same thing they just understand it differently from how we understand it. And so it, it, it works well. Um, every time I use it, the kids go, wow, that's, that's really interesting. Um, and then they go home and want to teach it to their parents. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> seriously, some but parents I, do need that teaching do need to be taught. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Out of the mouths of babes. Yeah. <laughs> So we are running up uh, against the hour. So okay. are there any, I know, right? Yeah, this was I such a having fun. Are there any final thoughts that you'd like to share before we wrap up? Yeah, I have one. So uh, when I teach success principles, um, you know, wherever we are, if we're in a group or a seminar or something or a workshop, 
uh, and we're talking about taking responsibility, there's an exercise that I think really drives the message home about taking responsibility. And everybody you might watching, you might want to write this down as well. And I'm going to ask all the ladies. It's called the sentence stem exercise. And it goes like this. If I were to take just 5% more responsibility. Now, when we say take 100%, it freaks people out. Oh! Right. So if I were to take just 5% more responsibility for this particular area in my life, I would fill in your blank. So an example, if I were to take 5% more responsibility for my health and well-being, I would. So let me start. So I, if I were to take just 5% more responsibility for my health and well-being, I would go to bed earlier so that I could wake up earlier. How about yeah. you, Gabby? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I go to bed early and I wake up early anyway. So yeah. So um, I think it was one of the uh, things that Cheryl talked about is the facial expression, because it's not about what you say, it's about your uh, facial expression. It's about your body language. I was uh, in my car, I have the 17 laws of success by uh, Napoleon Hill. And one of the things that he teaches there is practice in the mirror in your bathroom or in your bedroom when you talk and see what your face looks like. Because people will be looking in, into your eyes, will be looking at your face. So practice in mirror practice. And we have the mirror exercise also we, that we teach, but he says, practice, 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 and look at yourself, what you look like when you're talking, mm -hmm. and then keep on improving your facial expression. So I like that. And you know what? Don't react. Take time. Go mm -hmm. out for a walk. Do whatever. If you're into meditation, do meditation. Listen to some music and dance it out. Dancing is a great stress reliever before you respond to anything. So... Or have a margarita if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> I know, eh? Seriously. Oh, that second one. I know, eh? Yeah. Okay, go. I know. Okay, uh, go. Mine is really simple. I just wanna wanna leave you with this. Um, and this is something that I often say is I can't control what you do or say, but I can control how I react to what you do or say. And even if you tell somebody that then that kind of changes the conversation that they're gonna have with you. And so I have kind of used that in my tool belt because I've been married twice and I have learned that I can't control what people do or say, but I can control how I react to what they do or say. If it makes you feel any better, you can't control what people do or say if you've only been married once, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Or three times or four times. Oh, right? I know. You're absolutely Honestly. right. <laughs> you yeah. cannot control what people say. Um, first, I want to say, Jody, if I took 5% more responsibility for my health, I would have more green meals in my life. So more salads, more vegetables just more, I would have more vegetables, right? I don't even have to take anything out. I just need to add more I green know. and healthy stuff in. And I know that ultimately that will crowd out the other stuff eventually, right? So that would be a good 5%. And my final thoughts on this subject of um, taking 100% responsibility is that it is absolutely doable. I, I think we want to uh, remind you that we're not saying that you take respons you don't take responsibility for other people's actions. You don't take responsibilities for their words or the, 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 what they're thinking. You don't own anything that's not yours to own. You don't own the event unless you created the event then you have to own that. But in general, you don't own the event. You don't own that the economy crashed or you know that you got fired unless you did something to get fired. <laughs> um, 
but in general, you don't own the event itself, right? And so we're not saying, and Jack is not saying that you have to take responsibility for all the things that happen. But as has been stated, and as Cheryl just said, you are in charge of your thoughts and your thoughts ultimately lead to your actions. And so, you know, it is, it, it, there's a, a, a whole, you know, going back to the neuroplasticity thing, um, there's a whole pathway of how we do things, how we develop habits. And, and it starts with our thoughts and our thoughts and our feelings. And, and those things lead to our choices and our, our behaviors and the actions we take. And so if you want to change the actions that you take, change the thoughts that you're thinking. If you want to um, take 100% responsibility for yourself, own your thoughts, own your thoughts. You are absolutely in control of that. If you can't control anything else, control what you're thinking, which means paying attention to what you're taking in, words, songs, what you're reading, who you're hanging around, right? Look at the people that you have in your circle. I have these awesome ladies as part of my life and I am immensely better for it. And I thank you ladies for being a part of my life. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you everyone. I am proud to be part of this amazing team. How fun. Any comments in the, in the group? Let's see. We we got lots of comments. Um, great conversation. Um, it was the hour flew by. Um, the, a reminder that yes, we it, we can not just who made the comment about the mirror, looking in the mirror. Me, Gabby. Gabby. Um, not only in the mirror, but you can talk in the Zoom and you can look at yourself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was one of the comments, right? So yes, you can play it back and you can actually see what people see, right? A little it's sort of objective. So anyway, it was a pleasure hanging out with you ladies. It was a pleasure being here um, for you here in the Reset for Success nice. group. We will be back next month on the fourth Monday right? It is also the 22nd of March. If I have my dates correct, it's the 22nd of March, but, yeah. um, and we will be um, talking about the next principle, which I believe is, is um, about purpose. So Yay. I love that. Yes. So, I was, I was going to ask people to leave a comment. Um, yeah. You know, to share something that they that they heard that they liked or they see their, see themselves doing as a result of this conversation that we that we had mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, and then if they have a question, also they can put it there and we'll be yeah. checking it. Yeah, well, amazing. That would be amazing to keep track of what what changes you're making along the way and 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 seeing how it how how awesome how much more awesome you become as a result of implementing the, the principles, so. Yeah, and, and so, I'm, only, so, sorry, go ahead. Well, as you say, not only do we have this conversation for other people, we have it for ourselves too, to sure. constantly sure. remind ourselves. So yeah. it's so important to be in the energy of positive, you know, like-minded people, positive energy, and just keep reinforcing the principles, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. before we close, I just want to say thank you so much for Tommy Williams and Samantha Glass uh, for uh, being so active in this group. Love you, ladies. Absolutely. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next month. Next month. Bye. Yay. Take care. Thank you.